Oh yeah, this is Rivers with Some Cool Tech, and today I'm going to show you the GK802 Android Mini PC. This is the first Android Mini PC to have a quad-core CPU in it. It's got a 1.2 gigahertz IMX6 quad-core CPU. It's got Vivente graphics, 1 gig of DDR3 DRAM, 8 gigs of NAND flash, a full-size HDMI port. It's got Wi-Fi 802.11 BG and N. It's uh, cap It's got Android 4.0 on it right now, and it should be upgradable in the future to 4.1 and 4.2. Plus, there'll be some Linux development, I'm sure. Uh, it also supports SD cards up to 32 gigs. Here it is compared to my iMedo MX1, so you can see the Zeals is a little bit bigger. It's also a little bit thicker and just about the same weight. And of course, I had to take it apart as soon as I got it to see how everything works. So check that out, got quite a bit of circuitry on here. And here is your USB port, your mini USB port. Here's your recovery button right here. That will be used when you need to update your GK802. Here's your SD card slot, your quad-core CPU. Here's some DRAM and your full-size HDMI port. And on the back side, you've got two more DRAM chips here. And this is really interesting. The NAND flash is actually a micro SD card. So that's got a lot of potential for the future. Maybe you could upgrade the card to a faster card and speed up your whole system, or put a bigger card on there to get more app storage. Uh, I'm not sure how hard that would be, but it's got a lot of potential. Here's another cool thing. The heat sink on the CPU is this flexible silicon material, which allows it to make contact with the case. So it uses the case for the heat sink on the whole unit. And it's going to need it because it runs a little bit warm. All right, let's hook it up and see how it performs. So the first thing I noticed is it booted up really quick. I'd say it loaded up into Android in about 30 seconds, so that was nice and fast. It started out in 720p mode, I switched it to 1080p, stretched to screen, and I've never had to adjust that since, so that's been fixed. Next, I wanted to customize it out with Go Launcher and some of my favorite apps, so I'll speed this up so it's not too long for you to watch. First, let me cover the negatives. So the on-screen keyboard is giving me a problem. When you click in a box to type, it doesn't pop up the on-screen keyboard. I've used a wireless remote that I had instead, but hopefully they'll fix that with a firmware update. Next, uh, it does get a little bit warm, a little warmer than my other Android mini PCs. Not hot, but warm, and uh, that's to be expected, though, with a new, bigger quad-core CPU. And finally, just as just little, but the SD card is a little bit of a pain to get into the slot. You need a fingernail to push it in there, and then a lot of times when you take it out, it pops out into the air. And that's about it for the negatives, so not too major. Now for the positives. First off, this is nice and fast. The fastest Android mini PC I've used so far. Uh, second, the Wi-Fi works great. I've had no problems at all. I put in my password, and it was ready to go. Also, the video and picture quality on the GK802 is great. I can play a 1080p uh, MKV file on here, no problem. A full movie works just fine. You can skip around in it, and it has no problem at all. And it comes with Bluetooth, which is always a nice feature to have. And let's go ahead and run some benchmarks on Linpack and see how it performs. So right off the bat, it got a 103, which is almost double what the MK808 got. I'm going to go ahead and clear out some tasks out of the memory, and that should speed it up a little bit. So it's scoring anywhere from about 100 to 115. Just for comparison, the MK808 gets about 60 to 66. Here's the CPU information in case you're curious. So you can see it does indeed have four cores. Uh, it, the program's probably older than the CPU, so it's not listing the frequency, but it's 1.2 gigahertz. Also, let me show you what the settings look like on here, just in case anyone's curious. So you've got your Wi-Fi, which I said earlier, it works great, no problems there comes with Bluetooth. You've also got a Ethernet. If you if you hook up an Ethernet adapter, you can turn that on and it does work on here. I've used it before and it works great. Here's your display settings. So 720p and 1080, 1080p are what are available. All right, and here's what the internal storage looks like on here. And here's your Android information. I already g did go ahead and do a firmware update on this, but I think it just updated it to the exact same version that I already had. I didn't notice any differences whatsoever. Overall, I'm really happy with the GK802. It's nice and fast, and as you can see here, the 1080p display looks really good. I think it's a true 1080p display too, not uh, interpolated from 720. 
Anyway, I definitely recommend it, and I'll put a link to the GK802 in the description down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You'll, uh, whenever I have updates, you'll see them right away. And tell me what you think in the comments down below. Also, if you can give me a like, that will help me out so much. Is just hit that little like button down there, and that will really help me out a ton. So, as always, thanks for watching, and aloha.